that a comedy or a drama? Or both? Is M. Night Shyamalan a genius or a hack? Or both? I need some food for thought. Whatever happened to that guy? The happening. What happened to M. Night Shyamalan? Why is this movie so bad that it's good? Is it trying to be so bad that it's good? Is it a B movie or is it an A movie? Or is it a B movie trying to be an A movie? What is this thing? It's an enigma. Whatever it is, it is most certainly a hilariosity. A movie that's such an atrocity, it's hilarious. So let's talk about it today on my hilariosity review of M. Night Shyamalan's The Happening. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I don't have my eyes! I never misspelled anything! Not once, not one time! This movie. Why do I own it? Because it's incredible. The Happening, starring Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel, directed by the one and only M. Night Shyamalan. This guy has an extremely varying career. I mean, think about it. He has a movie that was nominated for many Oscars. He has a very underrated and overlooked film. He has a great alien invasion thriller. He's got a movie that people hated at first because of the twist ending, but has since developed a cult following. He has another movie that a lot of people hated that has also since developed a cult following. He's got this piece of shit, and this newer, dull, boring piece of shit. And then there's The Happening, a movie so incredibly hilarious. Is it supposed to be? I don't even know. This guy has the most varying career out of any director working today. It's actually kind of impressive. Even Mark Wahlberg himself has admitted that he finds this movie horrible. I will quote him directly, and this quote is filled with some words I don't usually say in my videos, so prepare yourself. All right, The Happening. Fuck it. It is what it is. Fucking trees, man. The plants. Fuck it. You can't blame me for not wanting to try to play a science teacher. At least I wasn't playing a cop or a crook. <laughs> Even the poor man is admitting the fact that the movie just wasn't what he thought it was going to be. You can even see him in the bloopers on the DVD, kind of talking to M. Night about this thing he's not entirely sure about. Why would we be asking for food if the place is boarded up and nobody's lived here for a long time? What makes you think there's fresh groceries? <laughs> hmm? Two words. Canned goods. It's like they're humorously arguing about it. You know what I mean? Like, he's like, I don't know about this idea. And M. Night's like, look, just do it, okay? See, this movie was marketed as this new thing for M. Night Shyamalan. It was going to be rated R. Very bloody, very violent. No more PG-13 scares. You go into this movie, and yes, it is very bloody and very violent in that way. But it's also kind of hilarious. Like, you're not really thinking, wow, that's really terrifying. You're thinking... This movie's amazing. It's so quotable too. I've actually gone to some of my friends and been like, come on guys, take an interest in science. Now before this movie came out, there was something that bothered me already that I was like, this is not going in a good direction. Check out the tagline of this movie. We've sensed it, we've seen the signs, now it's happening. Really, you're gonna reference your two most successful movies? In your tagline? How stupid is that? It's like, yeah, this movie doesn't have anything to stand on. Let's just talk about the fact that I made two really financially successful movies once, and we'll put that in the tagline. I mean, even on the making of documentary for Signs, M. Night didn't even want them to put that he was the director of The Sixth Sense in the trailer of Signs. He wanted Signs to stand on its own, and it did. Now, originally, this movie actually opened with Mark Wahlberg's character and Zoe Deschanel's character having this big fight, and it kind of explained why they were at odds with each other throughout the movie. M. Night deleted it because because he wanted it to be like us figuring out why they were fighting, which is kind of a good idea, I guess, because that way we can kind of get into the relationship and see where it's going. But at the same time, I wonder if it might have actually been a better character introduction for Wahlberg's character than, hey guys, so what's going on with all the bees out there? Hey, 
guys, there's bees dying all over the place. What do you guys think about that? I don't know. Albert Einstein said that if the bee was extinct, mankind would be extinct. What do you guys think about that? Come on, take an interest in science. <laughs> We'll get to Mark Wahlberg's first lecture in a bit, but first, this movie opens with two characters sitting on a bench, and the one actress's name is Kristen Connolly. You may know her from The Cabin in the Woods. I actually had a chance to meet this actress at The Cabin in the Woods screening, and since M. Night Shyamalan really inspired me as a filmmaker with his first few films, I asked her what it was like to work with him. When I brought up The Happening, her face like went cold, like she got really nervous, like I was about to insult her or something. Like, I, <laughs> I don't really know what that means. But we didn't talk about M. Night Shyamalan that much, let's just put it that way. We ended up talking more about The Cabin in the Woods, which is what she wanted to talk about clearly. So these two girls are sitting there, and she seems to be the only one who's not affected by this epidemic that is suddenly happening around her. She has these magic powers that for some reason, I guess, allow her to not be affected by the fact that everyone around her has instantly stopped moving and then started to walk backwards, and then her friend stabs herself in the neck and kills herself. That's a little interesting. Then we cut to these guys working on a construction yard, and bodies start falling everywhere. People are committing suicide everywhere. This is crazy what is going on. But the problem is, it's not really that frightening. It's kind of funny. And it's sad to think that, yes, all these mass suicides are funny, but the way they filmed it and the way the actors are so overly serious it just comes off as funny. Now, when I saw the trailers for this movie, there was actually a clip of Shyamalan in the trailer at the end, talking about how he was like, people that came out of the theater and they were shaking and they were so upset and disturbed that it was really awesome, very happy about it. And it seemed like he really was trying to make a scary thriller. But then later on, right around when the movie came out, he was like, yeah, it's a B movie. You know, you're supposed to be entertained by it. It's like a, a movie where it's like, yeah, we're cheesy. We're being that way on purpose. That's, that's what I'm, well, that's, right? Yes, cheesy B movie because that's what everyone's gonna think when they see it. And the thing about Mark Wahlberg's introductory lecture is that it literally spoils the entire movie. If you're actually listening to what comes out of characters' mouths, all he's talking about is how it's a scientific event that no one will ever be able to explain, and that's exactly what happens in the movie. And it's like it literally spoils everything that happens. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, Wait, so basically he just told me what's gonna happen in the movie, right? And he goes on to talk quite often about bees. Bees are apparently a reoccurring event in my Hilariosity reviews. Thank you, Nicolas Cage. The worker man was amazing. Hey guys. So soon we get an introduction to Zoe Deschanel's character, or Zoe completely miscast Deschanel. Her acting in this movie is so, so bad, and I am a fan of hers. I mean, she is just downright awful in this movie. It makes you kill yourself. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more evil that could be invented. During this scene, you get the first little hint of mankind being too evil when you see the paper that says, Philadelphia, and it's referencing how murder has gone crazy in Philadelphia. You get a lot of hints about that in this movie, that man is encroaching upon nature, and that's not a good thing. So they meet up with John Legua, I ruin every movie I'm in, Zamo, at the train station. They get on the train. They're hoping to get out of there because everyone thinks it's a terrorist attack. Which, you know what, that makes sense. A lot of people would think that nowadays. So suddenly the train stops and Wahlberg gets out and talks to the conductors and he's like, hey man, why'd you stop the train? Filbert? Where's Filbert? None of us know where that is. Hey, you can't just leave us here. And the guy's like, we lost contact. With whom? Everyone. Would a train just stop going to its destination if it lost contact with the people at its destination and anyone else and just let all of the passengers disperse into the woods? So it seems like most everyone groups together at this country diner where we actually get a kind of smart scene where Mark Wahlberg shows his mood ring to the little girl, John Leguizamo's daughter. He puts it on her finger and he's like, oh, it's yellow. That means you're about to laugh. He gets her to laugh. There's a kind of cool little tidbit with that ring that comes up again later in the film. It's actually pretty neat writing, but that's replaced immediately with a woman going, oh my God. Oh my God, look at this. And then you look at her cell phone and it's like this incredibly violent and disturbing video that no one would ever be like, oh, hey, random person next to me, sitting next to a little girl. Look at this life-changingly violent video that will haunt you for the rest of your life. It's this guy just letting lions bite off his arms. It's really funny. But seriously though, in real life, if you were sent a video that disturbing, would you look at the random person next to you as well as the little girl and say, oh my God, look at this. No, you'd be like, Dude, this is horrible. I'm not gonna show anyone this, especially at a restaurant. So then suddenly this Asian man that apparently everyone in the restaurant listens to is like, whatever is happening, it's not happening about 90 miles from here. And then everyone just listens to him and leaves. Hey guys, I like this guy. 
He understands what's going on. We all need to get about 100 miles away from here, so let's all run away. And then we get the introduction to one of my favorite characters in this movie, and I'm just gonna refer to him as the hot dog guy. This guy's awesome. He really likes hot dogs too. We'll get to that soon. So John Leguizamo wants to go search for his wife, which means he has to go in another car. Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel are saying goodbye to him. He lets them take care of his daughter. Wahlberg's like, I think we should go over some probabilities. That'd probably be a good idea, right? And Leguizamo's like, all right, there's a 62% chance that this ain't gonna happen to us. There's like a 62% chance, like what? I'm sorry, what is that, why, what? Like who just stands there and goes over probabilities? I get that he's a math genius freak guy who is calmed down by numbers, but my favorite part of this scene is Mark Wahlberg's delivery of this line. Oh, you go get her, Jules, okay? Of course, man, of course. Like you can really tell that Wahlberg was like, hey, uh, Knight, do I really have to read that in that exact same way? Uh, yeah, you do. Great. So John Leguizamo then drives off and we get the incredibly obvious I'm about to die shot. Then we get the hot dog scene. Now this scene is amazing. This guy, he just really freaking loves hot dogs. You like hot dogs, right? Uh-huh. You like hot dogs, don't you? Uh-huh. You know hot dogs get a bad rap. They got a cool shape, protein. <laughs> it's like, what is that? Even? <laughs> what does that even have to do? with anything, Mr. Shyamalan. <sighs> Nevertheless, thanks for that scene. I like it. So John Leguizamo's in this truck with all these people, then all of a sudden there's all these hanging bodies in the middle of the road, just hanging from poles and whatnot. The sad thing is, is that the girl screams after we see these bodies, even though there's like a 30 second period where they're driving along this road where anyone in this car would be like, hey, there are like 10 bodies hanging right there. But no, we get like this really long pan over shot and then a loud jump scare and the girl goes, ah! It's like, you would have seen those like a minute ago, woman. So he tries to calm her down by telling her a math riddle, a very complex math riddle. He's like, if you had this certain amount of money starting this day and then continued to double it each day, how much would you have at the end of the month? Anyone on the planet knows that more than likely it's at least more than a hundred, right? And she's like, it's 30, it's 30. No woman, it's not 30. Besides that, what is the point with all these math riddles? I get it, he's a math teacher, he loves math, but enough with all the probabilities and riddles and all this, it's dumb. So the gas or whatever they think it is, is starting to come through the car. The car like crashes into this tree with this incredibly epic shot. So in the next scene, Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel and the little girl are in the car with the hot dog guy and his wife, and they see an army truck approaching them. And he's like, oh, it's the army, we're safe. No, actually it's a tiny Adam Sandler babbling about cheese and crack Cheese and crackers. A shoobity doobity doo. Let's go, everybody. Let's go. He called this shit poop. So, based off the hot dog guy's thoughts about the plants, the plants having something to do with it, Mark Wahlberg starts to figure things out. Maybe it could be the plants. Is it possible that the plants are upset with humans and are trying to kill us by emitting toxins into the air? Is it truly possible? Well, think about it. That newspaper said that murder's rising in Philadelphia. Man, the plants are aware of these things. <laughs> so a large group of people kind of end up around the same spot as tiny Adam Sandler directs them where to go. So as this big group of people are walking to wherever they're walking, they start to hear gunshots. The wind is starting to attack. That's right, the wind is blowing the toxins around and there's gunshots and screams in the air. Mark Wahlberg goes, oh no. Then Zoe Deschanel goes, oh, I don't know. What, oh no? Well, maybe it's the frickin' gunshots and screams, lady. You think that might have something to do with it? Seriously, what a dumb thing to say. We're not gonna be like those assholes on the news who don't do anything when a problem happens. We are not assholes. But everyone just give me a goddamn second. I need a second, give me a second. All right, be scientific, douchebag. Figure out the variables, probabilities, experimentation. Ah. Yeah, that scene's in the movie and it was supposed to be really intense. It didn't really work out though. It's just amazingly awesome. So Wahlberg is starting to think, you know what? Maybe when people are grouped together, you know, we need to split up. We need to get away from groups because this thing is attacking groups because, you know, we're stepping on the grass or whatever. We're bumping into too many leaves. So we need to split up into groups. So at this point in the movie now, people are dying everywhere and Wahlberg is really starting to think, you know what? Maybe we're setting off the plants. Maybe it's the plants. 
It's probably the plants. Yeah, we need to get someplace, right? We need to get out of here. Oh crap, here comes the wind. The big epic evil wind scene. M. Night tried to make the wind scary and it just didn't really work out. Eventually they run into these two kids. One of them is Spencer Breslin on loan from Abigail Breslin who was in Signs. And they're just chit-chatting a lot. You know, these two kids look like they're about 14 or 15 years old. You know, I don't really understand what they're doing there. They're immensely, incredibly calm for these two kids who are obviously separated from their families. You'd think that would really be what they were thinking about. Like, hey, where's my parents? Where's my sister? Where's my brother? Where are my grandparents? I don't know, something besides, oh cool, that's a mood ring, let me see that. Oh, wow. There's a kind of clever idea that happens where they're in a model home and you don't find out they're in a model home until after that scene where all the stuff in the house is fake and you're watching it like, what in the world's going on? It was kind of a clever idea, but in the long run, it kind of ended up being a distraction at the same time. In this scene, however, we get an incredible moment where Wahlberg talks to a house plant. And I understand that in this scene, it is supposed to be funny, but that's the enigma of this movie. You can't always tell, like, is this supposed to be funny or is this just so bad that it's funny and you can't always tell which one is which we're just here to use the bathroom and then we're just gonna leave i hope that's okay so when he's looking down a hill he sees a whole bunch of people running and he's like there's too many people over there oh no there's too many people and sure enough they all stop moving and oh there it is they're done for he turns on a lawnmower and lets it run him over it's the violence in the movie just isn't scary. It comes off as funny. Then they run past a sign where the shot lingers on homes being developed and everything. More man-made problems. We get it, Shyamalan. The plants are upset at us. They don't like us. So they come upon this house and they're knocking on the doors because they think maybe there could be some food in there. The little girl is swinging on a maple tree. Why would you do that? Obviously everyone's freaking out about this plant thing. Might not be a good idea to go on the swing. In fact, Wahlberg says, Maybe that's not a good idea. I told her just for a minute. What kind of tree is this? I think it's a maple. I mean, this is like time wasting dialogue at this point. Now during this scene, Mark Wahlberg is trying to convince this guy who's in the house that they're normal. His way of convincing people that they're normal is by doing this. One black water, keep on rolling. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? See? We're normal. Just a FYI, if you ever want to convince someone that you're normal, don't do that. Then all of a sudden the kids like turn into rioters. They're like, show your faces! Open the door, we just want to get some food for this little girl, you pussies! Like where in the world did that come from? It was almost like M. Night was giving us a reason to not be that sad about the fact that those kids are about to get shot. <laughs> yes, the children are killed. They're all killed. And you're kind of like, wow, this is shocking, but no. It doesn't hit the line that Shyamalan wanted it to, I think. Because the whole movie is so funny, but it's like it's bad and funny. And so when these kids are getting killed, you're like, I don't know how to feel about this, actually. Is it disturbing or just kind of funny? Or am I disturbed because I think it's funny? So after the kids die, they actually kind of hang out for like a minute. The girl's still on the porch and Wahlberg is like sad about it. And you're like, you might want to get away from this guy who's taking a shotgun and just sticking it out of his windows and stuff. You might want to get away from that area. Then we get this needless news reporter exposition where it tells us what's going on in the world because without that, we wouldn't know what's going on. In fact, there's a lot of news reporter exposition in this movie. I hate in movies where someone just stands up and goes, here's the information that you need to know, audience, because you are too dumb to figure out these plot points on your own. I will tell them for you because I'm reading from this script. I hope you figured it out, thank you. Pretty soon they stumble upon an old house. Welcome to the crazy old lady house. That sounds like a Goosebumps title. Wahlberg just kind of stands there and stares at this woman. She's like, why you eyeing my lemon drink? I suppose the nice thing to do would be to let you stay for supper. Come in. I'm not gonna ask you again. Man, it was really easy to be invited into the house of someone who's been completely cut off from society for decades who just allows any random person to enter her house and makes dinner for that person when they do not say a single word. But that's okay, because if she hadn't done that, then we wouldn't get this scene. I hear you whispering, planning on stealing something. No, ma'am, we're not. Planning on murdering me in my sleep. What? No. <laughs> I love that scene. What? No. Now one of the biggest WTF moments of this movie is when he wakes up the next morning and goes in her room and sees a doll, like it's just a doll in her bed, like this really weird wooden doll. The weird thing is, is he's literally approaching the bed where anyone on earth would be able to at this point see that that is a small wooden doll. And he goes, Mrs. Jones? 
no, Wahlberg, it's really not Mrs. Jones. It's a doll. So she flips out. She sees him. She flips out. She's like, you all have to leave right now. Just right now. Get out of here right now. And she goes crazy. And trust me, she starts giving off some bad vibes. Because when she goes outside, even though she's completely by herself, the plants, they don't like that. They take over her mind and they force her to kill herself by smashing her head through various windows. Now listen, it's very clear at this point that M. Night Shyamalan is trying to tell us that humans are giving off bad vibes. It has nothing to do with groups. It's got nothing to do with that. You're a human, you give off bad vibes. The plants, they don't like that. They're gonna kill you. <laughs> so that old, lonely, depressed lady who's been living alone and cut off from society, who's been growing her own food and taking care of her house and all that stuff that has nothing to do with harming the earth, you're actually cultivating the earth and making it better. She must have been really giving off some bad vibes out in her garden at that moment for the plants to be that upset with her. So Wahlberg realizes that Zoe Deschanel and the little girl are in the small little shed. There's a speaking tube under the ground into the house and he's able to communicate with them through there. He's thinking the plants are getting more sensitive and this could be the end. He looks at his mood ring. His ring is yellow. He starts to cry. Now this is what I was talking about. Earlier in the movie where the little girl put the mood ring on and it turned yellow. She was about to cry in that moment, but he was able to convince her to laugh. Now that's kind of good writing. That's kind of cool that he made that connection with the end of the movie. That's neat writing. Nevertheless, this movie is amazingly bad. So he's saying, you know what? I think this is it, but I don't want to say goodbye to you through this tube. We're going to go outside and we're going to meet each other. So they do. Then we get an exact time stamp in the bottom of the screen where apparently it all happened because we know the exact time that, I don't know. It's crazy. Can I just say, who shot this shot? Look at this shot. It's completely off center. Nothing, what? Like her face is cut off. That is in the movie. I have not cropped that at all. This is a shot from the movie. Who looked at that and said, yeah, that's the one we're using. Tak Fujimoto was the director of photography for this movie. He was also the DP for Signs. He's a very good cinematographer. What happened to that shot? I don't even know. But that just kind of shows you what this entire movie is. It's people that are kind of half-assing it. And that shot proves it. So we get some more news reporter exposition. Apparently it just ended. I mean, it just, that's it. The plants decided, you know what, we're done. Which harkens back to that opening scene where Wahlberg was like, books will give a reason, but science won't be able to explain it. It'll just be like a random event. We'll have no idea what happened. Thanks for spoiling the entire movie in that opening scene. Appreciate it. There's this news reporter who's talking and acting like Woody Allen basically tells us, you know, we don't really know. It's like a rash. It's the first sign of a bad event. It's gonna grow, it's gonna happen again. It's like a rash. So as the little girl prepares for school, she's wearing her avatar backpack. And then the bus number is 2010. The last airbender came out in 2010. So when Zoe Deschanel looks at her pregnancy results, we see that they have plants behind them. Really? After the epidemic that killed thousands of people because the plants got pissed at humankind? You're gonna put some plants in your house? Maybe that's not a good idea? She's pregnant, they're happy, hugs, wonderful. We cut to France, French people are now getting affected by it. And the one magic person who's probably not giving off bad vibes notices before everyone else yet again. Ah, uh, The Happening. It's such a terrible, terrible movie, but it honestly is very entertaining. I gotta say, I do watch this movie maybe once or twice a year just because it's so funny and enjoyable to watch in that way. It's not a good movie though, but it is pretty hilarious. So guys, this has been my third installment in my Hilariosity segments. I hope you did check out my reviews of The Wicker Man with Nicolas Cage and The Room. Those are on my channel right now if you want to check them out. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back with more of these. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.